Hi everybody, welcome to Burn Bright. My name is Krista. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Poison House by Michael Ford. This book was published in August of 2011 by the Albert Whitman Company. The story takes place in 1855 London. In the prologue we are informed that the story is taken from the pages of a journal that was found on the property formerly known as Grieve Hall. It's a story of the events that took place over several months of that year. We follow the story of Abigail Tamper, who is a 15-year-old servant girl. She's just tried to run away and is brought back to the house by the constable. Abigail's mother, who was also a servant in the house, passed away a year ago, and the master of the house is slowly going insane. And the evil Miss Cotton now runs the household. Miss Cotton does not treat the servants well, and in return... They like to play tricks on her, making her think the deceased sister is still roaming the halls of the old house. The master of the house is slowly going insane, and Miss Cotton has taken over the duties of running the house. Her and Abigail don't quite get along very well. Abigail's mother has recently passed away, as has Miss Cotton's sister. The servants of the house do not like Miss Cotton and have decided to play tricks on her every once in a while, making her think that her sister is still roaming the halls. Miss Cotton has hired a doctor to come and look and talk to her about these feelings that she's having about her sister roaming the halls and during the visit from the doctor he has an episode in which Abigail's mother actually speaks through him telling Abigail to get out as fast as she can. The story develops from there and gets crazier and crazier. Miss Cotton is cruel, she's abusive, and so for and for some reason she fixates on Abigail and punishing her the most and seeming to go after her for everything that's going wrong in the house. I think the added stress between Abigail and Miss Cotton is that they both have recently lost somebody close to them. So they are still dealing with the grief and anger uh, that comes with losing a loved one. Especially Abigail, who's now an orphan, still remaining in the house to serve a slowly going insane master and a very cruel and a very cruel Miss Cotton. The whole feel of the house and its occupants is overcast with mystery and secret and an overall feeling of gloom and sadness. It's apparent that both Abby and Miss Cotton are still trying to overcome their grief in the loss of their loved ones. But the added stress of a master who's slowly going insane and an overall dislike for each other. Miss Cotton has it out for Abby, and she exhibits extremely cruel and a foreboding behavior. There's a very gothic feel to this story. The etiquette of the Victorian era is very well written, in addition to the kind of seance that happens in the first chapter, really helps to set the atmosphere for the rest of the book. Abby is a strong-willed character. She fights, she fights back. She wants to find the answers to what's going on. There's a huge mystery happening here. Lots of secrets being kept. When Mr. Greaves' son arrives home from war, the story becomes more intense. Thank you for stopping by the site today, and happy reading.